Okay, we're ready for some examples now. Uh, the first example is about strontium-90, and it says that strontium-90 has a half-life of 28 days. So whenever you hear half-life, that is um, saying basically that it decays at a rate proportional to its size. Half-life is the amount of time it takes for something to decay to half of the original amount. So um, I think you've probably heard of this before in a math class or a science class, but half-life means it's the amount of time for something to decay to half. So I always use like a marker because that's always what I have. So if this marker has some half-life, after one half-life has passed, however many years that is, how much will be remain is half of that amount. And after another half-life passes, half of that amount will be left, so we'll only have that much. And it'll keep cutting in half after the same amount of time, half-life. So you see, it doesn't matter how much you start with, after one half-life has passed, which is a set amount of time, it will decay to half of that amount proportional to its size. So this is exponential in nature. So that's what we know when it gives us the statement half-life. Um, and so it says a mass of 50 milligrams initially, find the formula, for the mass after t days. So, uh, what we have to know to write this equation, and so since we know it's exponential, we're ready to say, okay, we know this is what we have to write. Um, and so for this to be a working equation, we need to know k, and if they happen to give you the initial amount, then we're ready to, to do that. So they told us in the problem that a sub zero was 50 milligrams, that means we have to find K, but we can find K because they told us the half-life, half-life is 28 days. All right, let us do that. Um, I'm gonna do this, in the last example, I think I, uh, it was a doubling rate and I used the initial amount. I'm not even gonna use the initial amount this time to show you how you can always calculate K even without using that. So right here, they told me half-life is 28 days. That means that after 28 days have passed, how much I have left is one half of the initial amount. However much this is, whether this is 100 grams, 50 grams, 30 grams, it doesn't matter. Half of that original amount will be what's left after a half-life. And a half-life is 28 days, all right? So let's solve for K. Let's see, divide both sides by A sub zero, isolate the exponential expression. We get one half is e to the 28k. I'm going to apply a natural log to unlock natural log of e, log base e of e to the something. These are inverses undoing each other. So I just have this is equal to 28k. Divide both sides by 28. And so this is what k is equal to. So uh, if you write that in decimal, k is negative. 0 0.024755. I didn't have to make K negative. K ended up being negative. And that should agree in my mind because this is decaying. This is going low. So this is what we have for part A. Write the expression A of T. The initial amount is 50 E to the negative 0 0.024755 T. All right. Then part B says... Find the mass remaining after 40 days. Okay, so after 40 days, take A of 40, plug that in. And what we get is, what I got was 18.6 um, milligrams. That's all you do for part B. For part C, it says, how long does it take for the sample to decay to two milligrams? Okay, part C two milligrams, this is the amount we have left after some time has passed, A of T is equal to 50, um, everything's in milligrams, so I don't need to write that down, 50's in milligrams too, um, E to the negative point O two four seven five five T. We're gonna solve for T, divide both sides by 50, we get one over 25 is E to the negative point O two four seven five five T. Unlock this exponential with a natural log. These undo each other. Divide both sides by negative 0.024777555.
and we get that T is this, or it takes about, how long did that take? 130 days is how long it takes for this amount of, of strontium to decay, for 50 grams to decay down to two grams. That's how long it takes. All right, then D says sketch the graph of the mass function. So I did a rough sketch of this. Uh, D is a little sketch. So we know what exponential functions look like. Whoops, that's too high. We know what exponential functions look like. When um, the base is bigger than one, we know that it looks like this, right? We know that's the basic look of an exponential function. But when the base is between zero and one, it looks like this. That's what it looks like. Now, let's consider what we have going on here. We have e to a negative power, which is basically... Uh, it, let's think of 2 to like the negative 1 power. What did that do to our base? 2 to the negative 1 is really 1 over 2. So e to a negative power effectively makes this a base between 0 and 1. It makes it look like this, where the base is between 0 and 1. So this is what the, it's going to kind of look like. But we also have some points we can put in. We calculated some points here. We know that when time is 0, the initial amount, here's one point for t, a of t. These are my points. When time is zero, we have 50 milligrams. We know that's the biggest it's ever gonna be because it's decaying. And then we plugged in 40 after 40 days, right? How much did we have left? We had 18.6 milligrams left. And then in the last one, we did it backwards. They said, well, how long will it take for us to get to two milligrams? And we found that it took 130 days. Okay, so the T is in days, this is in days, this is in milligrams. So if you had to make a quick sketch, T is your X axis. This is T in days. All right, and Y is your, um, your Y axis is A of T, which is in milligrams. And so we could write it better, uh, milligrams of strontium 90, okay? So the thing is, we need to mark our axis up. And I use different scales on my X and Y just because I didn't have enough space. So let's see. This is going to go up to 50. So I'll call this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that's all I really got to account for because that's the most it's ever going to be is 0, 50. This is one point I had. This is 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. Okay. So I have to go out to 130 days. So what did I do? I went in tens that way too. So let's see, I might have to make this longer. Maybe I'll have to make this longer. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, ah, uh, 130, 120, 110, 190, 80, 70, 60. This is in days, T in days. Okay, so we have just three, three points. Zero, 50, okay. 40, I'm at 40, I'm at 18.6, so I'm a little bit below 20 maybe here. And then 130, I'm at two, I'm down here. So this is kind of what our graph is going to look like. It's going to get closer and closer and closer till it hugs the x-axis. So maybe you can make a better curve than me, but that's basically the graph for two. All right, let's look at three. It says a sample of tritium-3 decayed to 94.5% of its original amount after a year. Okay, let's consider that. This is decaying at a rate proportional to its size. This is exponential in nature. So we are on to use an exponential model for this. So let's have a look at this. Here we go. Okay. Now, it says, um, tritium-3 decayed to 94.5% of its original after a year. So this is three. So what is the half-life? A of t is a sub zero e to the kt. This is what we know we're allowed to use. 
we have to figure out the half-life, but they told us this information to get started. 94.5%, let's consider this, 94.5% of the original. In math, the word of means multiply. So 94.5% times the original. But when you multiply with percent, you change it to decimal. So point 0.945 of A sub zero is what it says. So it said um, it took one year for this to turn into this amount. So they gave us one point we could use. So here's a good point, let's use it. It says A of one, okay? A of one year equals to 0.945 of A sub zero. And so we put in one for T. So we're gonna solve this equation right here for, for K. So how do we do that? We divide both sides by, we'll isolate the exponential by dividing both sides by A sub zero. 0.945 is E to the K. Unlock this with the natural log. So this is what K is equal to is equal to this. So if you uh, put this in your calculator, you get um, negative 0.05657. That is what K is. So now finally we can try to answer part A. What is the half-life of tritium-3? Okay, so here let's fill in what we know. Now we know K is this um, negative negative point oh five six five seven we're going to put that in for k so if we have to calculate half life then we ask ourselves this how much is left after one half life has passed half of the original amount half 50 percent or half so you could either say 0 0.5 times a sub zero or one half times a sub zero this is how much we have left after some time has passed is equal to a sub zero e to the negative 0.05657t. We'll solve for t, and that will tell us how long it took for a half-life to pass. Divide both sides by a sub zero. We get one half is e to the negative this. Then we can take the natural log and unlock the e. Divide both sides by negative 0.05657. And we get that T is approximately equal to 12.2 uh, years. So the half-life is about 12.2 years. Because time in this case was in years. Okay, B. How long would it take for the sample to decay to 20% of its amount? All right. Keep in mind, we have never seen what the initial amount was in this problem at all. But we didn't even need to. It's in portion to however much that is. How long would it take for the sample to decay to 20% of its original amount? Well, 20% of a sub zero is, is times, and you change this to decimal, so we're going to say 0 0.2 times a sub zero is equal to a sub zero e to the negative um, 0 0.0567 t Divide both sides by a sub zero. Take the natural log of 0.2 is the natural log of e to the whatever, which just leaves us with the whatever. We divide both sides by negative 0 0.05657. And we get the, 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 the time it takes is about 28.5 years. Okay. So this is a very standard problem. Um, that what I really wanted to illustrate here was how we are getting, what we're getting here is a percentage of the initial amount without ever using the, the amount, like 100 grams or 50 grams or some starting. It's in terms of whatever the initial amount is because this is prepping us for the next problem, which I want us to do. Because after we do this one, then you'll be ready to do your homework, which has a similar question in it. So number four is about dinosaur fossils. So um, let's look at this. 
and there's some missing information I need to fill in for you because um, you have to have done all different homework problems to get all of the information. So I'm going to fill in some of the gaps on this one. Number four says that we found some, oh, oh we didn't, wouldn't that be awesome? Okay, but dinosaur fossils were found. And it says that dinosaur fossils are too old to be reliably, to be dated using, um, to reliably dated using carbon-14. Suppose we had a 68 million year old dinosaur fossil. What fraction of the living dinosaur carbon-14 would be remaining today? Suppose the minimum detectable amount is 0.1%. What is the maximum age of a fossil that we could date using carbon-14? So why I chose to do this problem is because in your homework, I have you do the next problem, which uses a different method of, of dating, not carbon dating. They use a different element, which has a longer half-life, so that you can, if you find something really, really old, you'll have enough of that substance left to be able to detect it. So that's what this is illustrating. All right, so let's just, let's just figure this out. It, um, this is the piece of information that's missing, that if you had to do all the homework problems, you would figure this out. I'm going to hand this to you. The um, decay rate, K for carbon-14, is negative 0.000121. We need to know that to be able to figure this out. So right here it says, suppose we had a 68 million year old dinosaur fossil. What fraction of the living dinosaurs would be remaining today? What percentage of the original is what we're trying to find? So here's our model, A of T is a sub zero e to the negative point oh 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 one two one times t what we're trying to find is what percentage of the original so let us would be remaining after how much time so this is part a after um 68 million 68 times 10 to the six years we plug that in and what we're going to solve for is not is is a, a of t over a sub zero. So let's isolate our exponential. A of t over a sub zero is e to the negative point oh 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 one two one times sixty eight times ten to the six. Okay, we're gonna solve. We just have to figure out what this number is. Okay, so when you what this represents, this represents. the percent of the original that's remaining. The percent of original remaining. Whatever this number is, okay. So when I put this in my calculator, I got basically zero, that there's zero percent left. And what this is saying is that carbon-14, the half-life is too short to be able to um, reliably date really, really old things. So. What we need to do is, um, what they want to know is, what is the oldest thing that we could um, like find and still use carbon-14 to date it reliably? So, what they said in part B is, um, what's the maximum age of a fossil that we could date? Supposing that we have to have at least 0.1% remaining of the original. So, let's see. How much, what percentage do we need of the original? What does this need to be? This percent of the original has to be at least 0.1%, but in decimal, that's 0 0.001. So we need 0 0.001 of this original has got to be e to the negative 0 0.000121 times t. That's what we need to solve for. So we'll solve this for t. Take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of 0 0.001 is the natural log of e to this. These undo each other. We divide both sides by negative 0 0.000121. And that we get t is about equal to 57,008 and 57,088 years. So this is basically the oldest thing that we could find and say we could use carbon-14 to date this, okay? In your book, the next homework problem shows you a new method of dating where there's a longer half-life of substances. So if we find something really, really old like a dinosaur um, bones, then you could, you could detect it using that method. So, all right, that, that's um, exponential growth and decay stuff.